हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू आर चैनल सो लेट एस कंटिन्यू विद दी फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी शैल कंसिडर दी फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव साइकिल सो एज द नेम एम्प्लाइज दीज आर सम ऑफ दी साइकिलिक चेंजेस विच आर अकरिंग इन दी फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव system so usually there are two places where most of the alterations are taking place that is in the ovaries and secondly the uterus okay so these are the two organs in which there are some sequential events which are taking place in a cyclic manner okay so over a period of time all these events will repeat okay so that's why it is known as female reproductive cycle okay so let us consider this female reproductive cycle so let us understand what are these changes which are taking place okay so as i have discussed earlier during the reproductive years of non pregnant females now this is very important non pregnant female that is when the pregnancy does not occur throughout the reproductive years of a female there are some cyclic changes which are taking place where at two places one in the ovaries and the second in the uterus okay so each cycle Okay, so this cyclic events, as I have told you, it, these are some cyclic changes which are taking place. Okay, so each cycle it takes round about one month to complete, and several processes are involved over here, like oogenesis, as well as the follicular development will take place, and also there will be preparation of the uterus to receive the fertilized ovum. so all sort of preparations will take place in the uterus to receive as if the ovum is going to be fertilized by the sperm what is fertilization yes the penetration of the sperm into the ovum right so the so fertilization of the secondary oocyte by the sperm the male and the female gamete when they fuse together that process is known as fertilization so thinking that fertilization will take place before hand the uterus will start preparing itself okay so all these changes which are occurring in the uterus all these encompasses some sequential events okay and these take round about 1 months time to complete okay now apart from that there are several hormones also which play very important role in this female reproductive cycle rather most of the events are controlled by these hormones which are secreted by the hypothalamus anterior pituitary and the ovaries themselves so a number of hormones are released so the levels of hormones change and accordingly there are certain events which are occurring in the ovaries and certain events which are occurring in the uterus okay so the reason why these changes are taking place is the hormonal level so that's very important the levels of these different hormones so we'll discuss about the hormonal regulation as well okay so as i've told you told you earlier the ovarian as well as the uterine changes are taking place in a female reproductive cycle right so there are two cycles which are involved in the female reproductive cycle so all those events which are occurring in a cyclic manner in the ovaries these are known as ovarian cycle okay so ovarian cycle what it is it is a series of events in the ovaries that occur during and after the maturation of an oocyte okay so the 
oocyte is getting developed right we have seen in the cortex the ovarian cortex there are several follicles which are in various stages of development and at the same time the oocyte is also dividing right and it is differentiating to change it from one form to another form we have seen in the process of oogenesis okay so all these series of events which are occurring in the ovaries it is referred to as ovarian cycle okay then apart from ovarian cycle there is one more cycle which is taking place now similar cyclic events are also taking place in the uterus right so all these events which are occurring in the uterus these are known as uterine cycle or menstrual cycle so what, what is a uterine cycle or a menstrual cycle this this is a concurrent series concurrent means what something which is occurring simultaneously now there are cyclic events a series of events which are occurring in the ovaries that is known as ovarian cycle and simultaneously there are series of changes which are taking place in the endometrium of the uterus okay to prepare itself for the arrival of a fertilized ovum so it considers that the fertilized ovum is going to be received okay but we do not know whether the sperms will reach or fertilize the ovum but still the uterus the endometrium of the uterus it starts preparing itself for the receipt of this fertilized ovum okay, which will be implanted in the endometrium and which will develop in the uterus until the birth as a fetus okay so all these concurrent events which are taking place in the uterus as the ovarian changes are taking place all these events are known as the uterine cycle okay so these two cycles are included under the female reproductive cycle they constitute the female reproductive cycle now so when the fertilization will not take place what will happen we have seen that the stratum functionalis the endometrium it is composed of two layers right the innermost layer is the stratum functionalis which is not a permanent layer right it sloughs off now supposing if the fertilization does not occur hormonal levels will change it will decline as a result of which this layer which is a functional layer it will slow off that is it will be shed off and what will remain yes the permanent layer that is the stratum basalis right that's a permanent layer so this layer will shed off and again a new cycle will begin and again this stratum basalis it will give rise to a new layer that is the stratum functionalis it will be regenerated okay so all these events will take place in a particular sequence and that will be governed by the hormonal changes right so apart from the ovarian and the uterine cycles okay that is the changes in the ovaries and the changes in the uterus apart from this the female reproductive cycle also involve the hormonal changes which regulate both these cycles that is ovarian as well as the uterine cycle so also the female reproductive cycle include the related cyclical changes which are occurring in the breast and the cervix okay so all these taken together constitute the female reproductive cycle okay so with this brief introduction let us begin with the hormonal regulation of the female reproductive cycle so before going into the actual events which are taking place during this cycle let us understand what is the role of the hormones how the hormones are regulating uh, the several events which are taking place so let us understand the role of the hormones okay so hypothalamus as we have seen 
it in turn will control the secretion of hormones by the pituitary gland right. So, one of the hormone that is GnRH, GnRH is gonadotropin releasing hormone, okay, it is abbreviated as GnRH. So, this hormone which is secreted by the hypothalamus, it will reach the anterior pituitary okay, through the capillary networks as we have seen, it will reach the anterior pituitary and it acts on the gonadotrops, right. There are five types of cells which are secreting the hormones from the anterior pituitary. So, one of them are the gonadotrophs, right. So, this hormone gonadotropin releasing hormone, releasing hormone meaning it is stimulating the release of hormones by these gonadotrophs. Now, gonadotrophs are the types of cells which produce two types of hormones that is the FSH and the LH that is follicle stimulating hormone, okay, we have seen under the endocrine system when we have discussed the pituitary gland. So, these are the two hormones secreted by the gonadotrophs, follicle stimulating hormone that is FSH and the luteinizing hormone which is abbreviated as the LH and collectively both these hormones, these are known as gonadotropins, correct. Okay, so, these hormones are known as gonadotropins. Okay, so, that is why this hormone gonadotropin releasing hormone. So, this is the one which acts on the gonadotrops to release the gonadotropins that is FSH as well as LH, their release is increased. Okay, so, in turn what is the role of FSH? We have seen follicle stimulating hormone. So, it acts mainly on the ovaries, right for the development of the follicles, right. So, it initiates the follicular growth, whereas the LH, it stimulates the further development of the ovarian follicles, okay. So, both the hormones play an important role in the follicular development, okay. In addition to this, both the hormones FSH as well as LH they stimulate the ovarian follicles to secrete the hormone estrogen, okay. Apart from that the LH, okay, both as you can see FSH and LH, it stimulates the follicles to produce more and more estrogen. Apart from that the LH, it also stimulates the theca cells of the developing follicles to produce the androgens. So, certain androgens are also released and under the influence of the FSH, these androgens, these are taken up by the granulosa cells. What are the granulosa cells? The cells which are present right within the follicles surrounding the oocyte, these are known as granulosa cells, right. So, these granulosa cells, they take up these androgens and further it will convert it into estrogen. So, more and more release of the estrogen will take place, okay. And somewhere at the mid of the cycle, this hormone LH also stimulates the ovulation, the process of ovulation. What is the ovulation? Yes, it is the rupture of the mature follicle or the graphene follicle to release the secondary oocyte into the pelvic cavity. So, as a result of ovulation, the mature follicle, it will turn out to be corpus luteum, right. First it will form corpus hemorrhagicum which will get converted into corpus luteum. Okay, so, this formation of corpus luteum is also stimulated by the LH, okay, that is why it is known as luteinizing hormone. Okay. So, this corpus luteum which is formed under the influence of LH will start secreting several hormones like progesterone, estrogen, relaxin and inhibin. All the four types of hormones are secreted by this corpus luteum which is formed. Okay, so, let us understand what are these different hormones and what are their role in the female reproductive cycle and the normal growth of the 
female reproductive system. Okay. Now, considering the hormone estrogen which is a major hormone okay, in the females. So, there are round about 6 different estrogens which are isolated from the uh, plasma of the human female, okay, but 3 of them are found in the significant quantities that is the beta estradiol, estrone and the estriol. Okay. So, a very large amount of beta estradiol is found in the non-pregnant women. Okay. So, this particular hormone it is synthesized from the cholesterol in the ovaries. Now, let us understand what are the functions of each of these hormones. Okay. So, estrogen this is secreted by the ovarian follicles. Okay. So, this, this, this serves as quite a lot of important functions. Okay. So, first role of estrogen is to promote the development and maintenance of the female reproductive structure. So, it helps in the development and maintenance of the various organs of the female reproductive system. Apart from that the development of the secondary sex characteristic and the breast is also under the control of estrogen. Now, what do you understand by these secondary sex characteristics? So, these include the distribution of the adipose tissue in the breast. So, we have considered the memory glands in which we have seen that there are there is a lot of adipose tissue in the breast right. So, that is uh, one of the secondary sex characteristics of the females. So, also distribution of the adipose tissue in the abdomen, mons pubis and the hips is also a part of secondary sex characteristics which is developed by the estrogen. Apart from that the voice pitch of the females, the female pattern of voice. Okay, so, that is because of the presence of the estrogen. Also a broad pelvis, you know, pelvis of the females is a little bit broader that is also regulated by the estrogen. Apart from that the pattern of hair growth on the head and the body that is also controlled by estrogen. So, all these are the secondary sex characteristics. Then the next role of estrogen is that it increases the protein anabolism. This also includes the building of the strong bones. So, as you can see it will help in growth and development of the body right. So, in this regard it is synergistic with the human growth hormone which is secreted by the anterior pituitary. It also has anabolic roles right you in the growth of the cells and building of the strong bones. Okay, so, it acts synergistically along with the human growth hormone. Another role of estrogen is that it lowers the blood cholesterol level. Okay, so, cholesterol it is not good for health right. If increased in levels it may result in the coronary artery diseases as well. Okay, so, estrogen it is lowering the levels of cholesterol. Okay, so, this is the reason why the females under the age of 50, these are at a lower risk of development of coronary artery diseases as compared to males. So, the occurrence of the CAD coronary artery diseases in the females is less as compared to the males and this is the reason for it. Then apart from this moderate levels of estrogen in the blood, it inhibits the release of GnRH by the hypothalamus and the LH and FSH by the anterior pituitary by the feedback mechanism if moderate levels are present of the estrogen in the blood it will automatically decrease the release of GnRH as well as the LH and the FSH. Okay. Then the next hormone is progesterone. So, this is secreted mainly by the cells of corpus luteum and along with estrogen this particular hormone prepares and maintains the endometrium for the implantation. So, it is mainly responsible for the growth of the or proliferation of the stratum functionalis. Okay. So, endometrium thickness will increase and it will prepare itself for the implantation of the fertilized ovum. So, also it prepares the memory glands for milk secretion. Okay. Another role high levels of 
progesterone it will inhibit the secretion of GnRH as well as LH. Okay. Apart from that a third hormone is also released that is relaxin by the corpus luteum right. So, this particular hormone as the name implies relaxin. Okay. So, its main function is to relax the uterus. So, it inhibits the contractions of the myometrium. What is a myometrium? Yes, it is a middle layer of the uterine wall which comprises of the muscles right smooth muscles are present. Okay. So, this particular hormone it inhibits the contractions of these smooth muscles which are present in the myometrium. Now, this is advantages in that the implantation okay, that is implantation is a process by which the fertilized ovum it will attach itself to the wall of the uterus so that the fetus will grow in the uterus. So, this process of implantation of the fertilized ovum it occurs more readily in a quiet uterus, quiet uterus in the sense in which there are no much of contractions occurring right. Okay, so, it, it, it becomes easier for implantation to take place okay. and during pregnancy if at all the implantation takes place after the fertilization pregnancy occurs right. Okay. So, if the female is said to be pregnant. So, at that time also placenta produces more and more relaxing. Okay. So, it will start the relaxation of the uterine smooth muscle. So, it will continue the relaxation of the uterine smooth muscle. They will go on relaxing. So, that the baby which is growing it is easily accommodated in the uterus. Apart from that at the end of pregnancy that is after the completion of the 9 months at term this hormone again increases the flexibility of the pubic symphysis. So, also it dilates the uterine cervix. So, both these activities will help in the childbirth okay, or it will ease the delivery of the baby. Okay. So, the role of relaxin at different stages to support the implantation to relax the uterus okay, uterine smooth muscle so that the baby grows appropriately and at term it increases the flexibility of pubic symphysis and it also dilates the cervix. So, both of which will ease the delivery of the baby. So, this is the role of relaxin and the fourth hormone is inhibin which is secreted by the granulosa cells of the growing follicles and by the corpus luteum as well after the ovulation. So, as the name implies the role of this hormone is to inhibit the secretion of FSH and to a lesser extent LH. Mostly it decreases the secretion of the FSH. So, it is responsible for decrease in the levels of the FSH also LH but to a lesser extent. Okay. So, this is to do with the hormonal regulation. So, we have seen what are the role of different hormones okay, female sex hormones. Now, coming back to the events which are occurring in the female reproductive cycle. So, with this introduction we will understand how and where exactly these hormones are playing uh, important role during the female reproductive cycle. Okay, so, coming to the phases of this female reproductive cycle. Okay, so, this cyclic processes which are taking place in the ovaries and the uterus simultaneously usually last for round about 24 to 36 days. So, it is not a fixed period ok. So, it will not be constant it may vary from one female to another female. So, also within the same female also this cycle may not be constant in duration it may vary even in the same female from month to month the duration of this female reproductive cycle may vary it will not remain the same or exactly the same 
okay now for convenience we shall consider the duration of the female reproductive cycle as 28 days mind it it is not exactly 28 days in all the females at all the times for convenience we have considered a total period of 28 days to complete one reproductive cycle so considering 28 day cycle we will see what are the different phases which are taking place and how much time in days is required for each phase to occur okay so female reproductive cycle it can be divided into four different phases the first phase is the menstrual phase okay mind it menstrual cycle it is another name for the uterine cycle the changes which are taking place in the uterus this is something different menstrual phase together both the events in the uterus as well as the events in the ovaries taken together the first phase is known as menstrual phase okay second phase is the pre ovulatory phase pre ovulatory something which is taking place before ovulation pre ovulatory phase third one is known as ovulation and the fourth phase is known as the post ovulatory phase something which is taking place after the ovulation has occurred okay that's why it is known as post ovulatory phase okay so these are the four main phases into which the female reproductive cycle is divided into now <clears throat> as we shall discuss about all these four phases this is the diagram which we are going to focus on okay so this diagram explains all the events which are taking place during a 28 day cycle right these are the days 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to 28 so we'll see what are those changes which are taking place during these four different phases as they are occurring what are the changes which are taking place in the ovaries these so are the events which are taking place in the ovaries these are termed as ovarian cycle right so as the days pass from 1 to 28 we will discuss what are the changes in the ovaries what are the hormones which are controlling all these events and the concurrent events which are taking place in the uterus right which is known as uterine cycle or menstrual cycle okay so we shall discuss about all these phases in detail with respect to events occurring in the ovaries and the events which are occurring in the uterus okay so as you can see in the uterus which is a layer which is focused over here mainly yes it is the endometrium right because it is the endometrium which is getting altered over here right myometrium and the perimetrium both are permanent layer and in endometrium stratum basalis it is a permanent layer whereas there are changes which are taking place in the stratum functionalis so that we are going to focus over here okay with respect to the endometrium and simultaneously we shall also discuss why these events are taking place why these are happening this is the reason that's because of the changes in the levels of these four hormones that is fsh lh estrogen and progesterone so these are the four main hormones which are regulating most of the events which are occurring during this female reproductive cycle okay so in turn the levels of fsh and lh are controlled by the gnrh right so it also plays an important role in the various phases of the female reproductive cycle right okay so coming to the first phase that is the menstrual phase 
ok. So, we will be discussing the changes which are or the events which are occurring in the ovaries and the events which are occurring in the uterus ok with respect to each phase ok. So, to start with the first phase that is the menstrual phase. So, this phase menstrual phase is also known as menstruation or menses, menses means a month. Now, this particular phase it lasts for round about first 5 days of the cycle, first 5 days ok. That means what? The first day of the menstruation is day 1 of a new cycle, correct ok. So, day 1 is the beginning of the menstrual phase. So, the new female reproductive cycle starts with the first day of the menstrual phase ok. So, let us discuss what are the events which are occurring in the ovaries ok. Now, these events which are taking place in the ovaries these are mainly under the influence of FSH. So, it is because of the FSH that the follicles in the ovaries grow right ok. So, several primordial follicles they develop into primary follicles which then develop into secondary follicles right. So, we have seen the follicular development in the earlier video right where we have discussed also about the oogenesis simultaneously right. So, under the influence of FSH follicular stimulating hormone follicles will start develop. So, this particular process of development does it take place in one month? Does it happen that all the primordial follicle turn out to be primary follicle? All the primary follicles will uh, turn out to be secondary follicle? Does it happen? There are a number of follicles which are present in the ovaries, right? But what happens? Only a few are left, right? Yes, only round about 400 uh, follicles will reach their maturity during the female uh, reproductive life of a particular female, right. So, all the follicles do not mature, right. All the follicles do not turn out to be a mature follicle or a graphene follicle, correct. Most of them are degenerated during their process of development. So, this follicular development continues under the influence of FSH, all the follicles are growing but all of them do not grow at the same pace. So, a particular follicle which begins to develop at the beginning of a particular menstrual cycle, it may not reach the maturity and ovulate until several menstrual cycles later. So, its growth will start during a particular menstrual cycle, but it will not complete its all its matured state at the end of that particular cycle. It might take several cycles for it to reach its maturity or sometimes it may not even reach the maturity, it might get degenerated, atresia will take place, right, ok. So, with respect to the menstrual phase, the events which are taking place in the ovary, what is happening under the influence of the FSH? the follicles are developing right primordial to primary, primary to secondary correct and why it is happening? Yes, that is because of the increase in the FSH level ok. Now, coming to the events in the uterus. So, during this menstrual phase what is happening in the uterus? Yes, what is happening? to your stratum functionalis, it is getting shed off right ok. So, because of the decrease in the levels of these two hormones progesterone and estrogen right, what is happening to their levels? It is decreasing right at the end of this cycle. So, here begins the new cycle right, that is what is happening on day 1 menstruation will begin right, that is the stratum functionalis is slurred off. So, it will result in a menstrual flow from a uterus which comprises of 50 to 150 ml of blood, tissue fluids, 
mucus which is produced by the cells of the uterine uh, endometrium and the glands. It will also comprise of the epithelial cells which are shed off from the endometrium. Now why this menstrual flow is taking place? Why does discharge occur? Now the reason behind this is the decrease in the levels of these two hormones progesterone and the estrogen. Now what happens because of this decrease in the levels of these hormones? As a result of decrease in these levels of these two hormones, it stimulates the release of prostaglandins. So, prostaglandins which are one of the type of autocoids which are present in the body. So, these are released and these prostaglandins it will cause the uterine spiral arterioles to constrict. Now, what are spiral arterioles? If you all can remember the blood supply to the, the uterine walls the spiral arterioles there are straight arterioles and spiral arterioles right. So, straight arterioles are the ones which supply the stratum basalis whereas the spiral arterioles are the ones which are supplying to the stratum functionalis right. So, as a result of the release of PG prostaglandin as the levels increase these blood vessels are constricted means what their size will decrease. So, what will happen to the blood supply to this layer? Obviously, it will result in decrease in the blood supply right to the stratum functionalis. So, since the blood supply is decreasing what will happen to your cells from where they will get the oxygen. So, the O2 level will decrease in this particular layer right. So, will the cells survive? No. So, this will result in cell death. Okay. So, cells in this particular region stratum functionalis will die and as a result of this the entire stratum functionalis slows off, the entire layer is lost. Okay. So, by the time this layer is lost the endometrium is very thin round about 2 to 5 mm in the size. So, it is thinnest at this particular period because <coughs> only the stratum basalis is left right entire stratum functionalis is lost. Okay. So, this menstrual flow which is produced it passes from the uterine cavities through the cervix through the vagina towards the exterior. Okay. So, these are the events which are taking place in the uterus during the menstrual phase from day 1 to day 5 the stratum functionalis will be shed off. Okay. Then coming to the second phase that is the pre ovulatory phase. Okay, so, pre ovulatory phase is the time between the end of menstruation that is the first phase up to the ovulation. So, the period in between is the pre ovulatory phase. Now, this particular phase it is the most variable phase in length as far as length is considered the duration is most variable out of all the phases. So, usually the variation in the length of the cycle we have seen that it may last from 24 to 36 days right. So, that variation is mainly because of this pre ovulatory phase it is not constant in duration ok. So, this particular phase it may last from day 6 to day 13 when we consider a 28 day cycle it will last from day 6 to day 13 ok. So, this it starts over here and ends on day 13 this is the pre ovulatory phase. So, let us consider the events which are occurring in the ovaries ok. So, during this particular phase pre ovulatory phase some of the secondary follicles in the ovaries they will start secreting the estrogen and the inhibitor. And about day 6 only a single secondary follicle ok only one secondary follicle in both the ovaries ok out of the two ovaries in any one of the ovaries either right or left in any one of the ovaries only one secondary follicle it will be 
outgrown all the other follicles and it will become a dominant follicle. So, it will become larger as compared to all the other follicles. Okay. So, this dominant follicle it will continue to secrete the hormones estrogen and the inhibit. So, these increase in the levels of estrogen and inhibin in turn will decrease the secretion of the FSH. Okay. So, as the level of the estrogen is increasing, what is happening to the FSH? It is decreasing right during the pre ovulatory phase, correct. So, as estrogen secretion is increased by this dominant follicle the secondary follicle which has developed into a dominant follicle, it will go on increasing the re release of the estrogen and as the levels of estrogen increases, the level of FSH will decrease. Now, when level of FSH decreases, what will happen? What is the function of this FSH? Yes, to promote the growth of the follicles, right? So, as a result of decrease in the levels of FSH, what will happen to the growth of other follicles? one of the follicle has become the dominant follicle, it has become a larger in size. So, as the FSH level decreases during this particular period, it will decrease the growth of the other follicles. Okay. So, other less well developed follicles, they stop growing and undergo the atresia. So, we have seen that a number of follicles they undergo atresia. Now, sometimes more than one secondary follicle may become co-dominant. Okay. So, in that case fraternal twins or non-identical twins will be formed which do not look alike. Right. There are certain twins which look exactly the same. Okay, but there are certain twins they do not look alike right. So, that is because of the development of the two or more than two secondary follicles becoming a dominant follicle. So, they may rupture and release the secondary oocyte. So, simultaneously two or three secondary oocyte may also be fertilized. Okay, so, in that case fraternal twins or non-identical twins or if three occurs then triplets will also be born. Okay. So, that is because two or three secondary follicles become co-dominant and it will be fertilized at the same time. Okay. So, these are the events which are occurring in the ovaries. Okay. So, normally what, what, what will happen? Only one dominant secondary follicle it will become a mature or the graphene follicle. So, as this follicle continues to grow only one follicle will grow and it might grow round up to 20 mm in diameter and now it is ready for ovulation. So, this particular follicle it forms a blister like bulge on the surface of the ovary. So, if this is a ovary there is a bulge which is formed due to the presence of this graphene follicle. Now, it is ready to rupture. Okay, so, it will rupture and release the secondary oocyte in the pelvic cavity. right? So, it forms a blister like bulge on the surface of the ovary. Okay. So, as it continues to grow this mature follicle will continue to increase the production of the estrogen. So, estrogen level will go on increasing as you can see during the pre ovulatory phase. Okay. So, with reference to the ovarian cycle the first two phases that is the menstrual phase and the pre ovulatory phases both the phases taken together these are known as follicular phase okay. because here ovarian follicles are growing right in the in, in, in the ovaries if you can see during the menstrual phase as well as pre ovulatory phase what is happening follicles are growing right that is why this is referred to as follicular phase. With reference to the ovarian cycle both these phases menstrual phase and the pre ovulatory phase these are known as follicular phase. Now, coming to the events in the uterus during the pre ovulatory phase. Okay. So, as the estrogen levels are increasing, okay, 
So, more and more estrogen is being produced by the growing ovarian follicles, right. So, it stimulates the repair of the endometrium. Okay. So, the cells of stratum basalis which is a permanent layer, it will undergo mitosis and it will produce a new stratum functionalis layer. Okay. So, as the thickness of the endometrium is increasing, the short straight endometrial glands, these will also develop. The arterioles, these will coil and enter into the stratum functionalis, it will penetrate into the stratum functionalis. Okay. So, at the end of this particular phase, the thickness of the endometrium, it approximately doubles, it was 2 to 5 mm right at the end of menstrual phase. Okay. So, now it has doubled 4 to 10 mm and with reference to the uterine cycle, the pre ovulatory phase is also known as proliferative phase. That is because the endometrium is proliferating right. So, because of the increase in the levels of estrogen produced by these follicles, what it is doing this estrogen, it is initiating the repair of this stratum functionalis, a new stratum functionalis is being proliferated. That is why this phase, pre ovulatory phase with respect to the uterine cycle, it is referred to as proliferative phase. Okay. Then coming to the third phase that is the ovulation. So, this we have already seen ovulation, it is the process by which the rupture of the mature or the graphene follicle take place to release the secondary oocyte into the pelvic cavity and this occurs on day 14 of a 28 day cycle. Okay, so, the secondary oocyte along with the zona pellucida which is the glycoprotein layer surrounding the secondary oocyte and the corona radiata which is the innermost layer of the granulosa cells which is tightly held against the zona pellucida. So, along with both these the secondary oocyte is released into the pelvic cavity. So, ovulation will now take place. So, mature follicle it has ruptured to release the secondary oocyte okay, so which is known as the ovulation and it is mainly caused by the hormone. LH. Okay. Now, why it is happening? Why this process of ovulation takes place? That is because increased levels of the estrogen during the last part of the pre ovulatory phase, it has a positive feedback mechanism on the hypothalamus as well as the anterior pituitary. So, high levels of estrogen, it stimulates the hypothalamus to release more and more GnRH gonadotropin releasing hormone. So, this in turn will act on the anterior pituitary to increase the release of the LH. In turn the estrogen is also acting on the anterior pituitary to directly release the LH. So, it will the increased level of the estrogen in turn is causing the release of more and more LH. Okay. Apart from that the GnRH also causes increase in the level of both FSH as well as additional LH will be released. Okay. So, this increased LH levels it brings about the process of ovulation. So, it will act on the mature follicle <coughs> to rupture and it will result in the release of the secondary oocyte into the pelvic cavity and this follicle, the mature follicle, it will get converted into corpus hemorrhagicum because there is a blood clot over here. So, due to the rupture, a small amount of bleeding will take place. So, why this process of ovulation is taking place? That is because of the increase in the level of the LH. So, generally after 9 hours of the peak level of LH, the process of ovulation will take place and this secondary oocyte it will be swept into the uterine tubes. Okay. Sometimes this secondary oocyte is even degenerated, it may be lost into the pelvic cavity as well. Okay. And as the ovulation takes place, sometimes a small amount of blood it may leak into the pelvic cavity after the rupture of the follicle and this can result in a mild pain known as metelchmas. 
that is the pain in the middle. Okay, so, at, at the time of ovulation some females may experience this pain due to the release of the blood into the pelvic cavity. That the last phase of the female reproductive cycle is the post ovulatory phase. Okay, so something which is occurring after the ovulation. Okay, so, this is the time in between the ovulation and the onset of the next menses that is the next cycle. Menses means the menstrual phase right of the next cycle the first phase. Okay, so, this particular phase it is most constant part of the female reproductive cycle as far as duration is considered. Okay, so, it lasts for 14 days if you consider a 28 day cycle it will last for 14 days that is from day 15 to day 28 okay so from 15 day to day 28 last the post ovulatory phase now let us consider the events in one of the ovary right that's very important because in any one of the ovary a graphene follicle will rupture right any one of the ovary so that's why it is considered as events in one of the ovary. Okay. So, after ovulation the mature follicle it collapses, the basement membrane which is present in between the granulosa cells and the theca interna it breaks down and this mature follicle it will now get converted into corpus hemorrhagicum because a small amount of the blood bleeding will take place. So, a blood clot will be formed after minor bleeding of the rupture of the follicles. Okay, so, now this will turn out to be a corpus hemorrhagicum. Hemo means blood and regic means bursting form. Okay, so, as the corpus hemorrhagicum is formed, okay, what is happening? Basement membrane which is present in between the granulosa cells. Okay, so, here the granulosa cells is present and theca cells are present outside. So, this basement membrane is disrupted. So, both these cells will get mixed up granulosa cells and the theca cells and now they will get converted into corpus luteum cells under the influence of hormone LH. LH levels are high now. Okay. So, further LH will also stimulate the corpus luteum to secrete several hormones like progesterone, estrogen, relaxin and inhibin. So, also the luteal cells will absorb the blood clot which is formed over here that will get absorbed by the luteal cells now corpus luteum cells they have become right both the types of cells have mixed now theca cells and the granulosa cells they have get got converted into corpus luteum cells. So, they will get mixed together and they will absorb that blood clot and it will start producing progesterone, estrogen, relaxin and the inhibin hormones. So, with respect to the ovarian cycles Okay, this phase that is a post ovulatory phase it is also referred to as luteal phase. Okay. So, with respect to ovarian cycle because here corpus luteum is formed this phase is also known as luteal phase. Okay, now, further events in the ovary that will depend upon whether the fertilization has taken place. <coughs> okay, whether the released oocyte is fertilized by the sperm or not will decide what will happen further. Now, supposing if the oocyte is not fertilized, if the sperms are not present, a oocyte it will reach the ampulla of the uterine tubes, but supposing if there are no sperms, fertilization will not take place. So, as a result of this the corpus luteum which is formed, it will last only for 2 weeks time. it is a 2 weeks period right. So, this corpus luteum it will remain only for 2 weeks ok. So, after which its secretory activity will decline and it degenerates into a corpus albican. So, it will get converted into corpus albican now ok, it is no longer corpus luteum. So, as the levels of this progesterone estrogen inhibin decreases the release of GnRH, FSH and LH will in turn rise right 
because of negative feedback mechanism their levels were decreased. So now again the levels of these hormones will increase. Why? Because corpus luteum has got degenerated levels of all these hormones will decrease. Okay. So further what will happen as this FSH has increased follicular growth will resume and a new ovarian cycle will begin. Okay. So all the follicles will start regrowing now at the end of this. Okay. So as you can see the FSH level is increasing now, progesterone estrogen levels have decreased, FSH level is increasing and the new ovarian cycle will begin over here. So new follicles will start developing. Now supposing if the secondary oocyte is fertilized, what will happen? What are the changes which may take place in this ovary? <coughs> so if the secondary oocyte is fertilized by the sperm, this corpus luteum it persists beyond the two week lifespan. What we have seen? Corpus luteum it lasts only for two weeks right and after that it gets converted into corpus albicans if the fertilization does not occur. But if the fertilization takes place this particular corpus luteum it is rescued from degeneration that is the degeneration of corpus luteum will not take place. Why? Because of this hormone human chorionic gonadotrop HCG. So this is the hormone which is produced by chorion of the embryo. Now what has happened? Fertilization has taken place right of the secondary oocyte. So now embryo will be formed right. It will turn out to, to be a zygote implantation will take place and it will now grow as an embryo. So it will start releasing a hormone after about 8 days of fertilization that is human chorionic gonadotropin. Okay. So this particular hormone it prevents the degeneration of the corpus luteum and corpus luteum will continue to secrete the progesterone and the estrogen. So levels will not decline. So will the stratum functionalis be slowed off? Will it happen? No, that is prevented because of the high levels of the hormones which are secreted by the corpus luteum. So the presence of this hormone human chorionic gonadotropin in the blood of the female or the urine of this female it is an indicator of the pregnancy okay, which, which is also detected by the home pregnancy kits okay, which are available. Okay, so you can test whether the pregnancy has occurred or no okay, that is because of the hormone human chorionic gonadotropin which you can detect whether pregnancy has occurred or no. Okay. So here if the fertilization has taken place corpus luteum will not get converted into albicans it will survive beyond the two weeks time and its secretion of progesterone and estrogen it will continue and this layer will not slow off it will remain as it is okay, to support the growth of the embryo. Then coming to the events in the uterus in the post ovulatory phase. So progesterone and estrogen levels are high right because it is being produced by the corpus luteum. So this will continue the growth of the endometrium. Okay, so the growth and coiling of the endometrial glands, vascularization that is the growth of blood vessels of the superficial endometrium it will continue. So it will thicken round about up to 12 to 18 mm in size okay, in the thickness the endometrium. So it has increased a lot right because of the proliferation of this particular layer. Okay. Now lot of secretory activities are taking place right. So as the endometrial glands are growing they will start secreting glycogen. Remember glycogen it breaks down into organic acids, it increases the acidic environment which protects the female reproductive system from the growth of microbes and all. Okay. So endometrial glands it will begin to secrete the glycogen during this particular period that is why this phase is known as secretory phase with respect to the uterine cycle okay as you can see over here okay it is known as 
secretory phase with respect to uterine cycle the post ovulatory phase is also known as secretory phase because here a lot of secretions are taking place ok. So, these particular changes ok in the uterine la layer it is at the peak after about one week of the ovulation ok that is after one week of ovulation as you can see that this layer has grown a lot right to receive the fertilized ovum thinking that the fertilization will take place. Now, supposing if the fertilization does not occur the levels of progesterone and the estrogen both will decline right and as a result of this degeneration of the corpus luteum will take place. So, due to decrease in the progesterone and estrogen menstruation will take place that is this particular level will slow off if the fertilization has not taken place ok. So, this levels of progesterone and estrogen have reduced now at the end of 28 days. So, as a result of this because fertilization has not taken place new cycle will become that is the menstruation will begin ok. So, this is to do with the female reproductive cycle. So, these are some of the hormonal changes and the events which are controlled which are summarized over here. GnRH from the hypothalamus stimulates the FSH and LH release. In turn FSH will promote the growth of the follicles primordial to primary, primary to secondary follicles. Maturation of one of the follicle will take place which will turn out to be a dominant follicle. So, it will increase in the levels of estrogen and inhibin by the granulosa cells. So, this will result in repair and proliferation of the endometrium. At the mid of the cycle ovulation will take place that is promoted by the LH ok ovulation will occur and the mature follicle it will turn out to be into the corpus hemorrhagicum and then into corpus luteum. Corpus luteum in turn will secrete the hormones like progesterone estrogen ok also it will increase the secretion of the inhibin. So, these two hormones will prepare the endometrium for the receipt of the fertilized ovum and the hormone inhibin it will inhibit the release of LH. Further if the fertilization does not occur it will get converted into corpus albicans. So, here the secretion of progesterone estrogen will get decreased menstruation will occur and this in turn will stimulate the release of GnRH and the FSH and LH and the new cycle will begin ok. So, this is to do with the female reproductive cycle this is the reference for my presentation thank you for watching.